welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Ever is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome back, family, to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so happy that you're here. Today on the show, I'm so excited for you to meet Marissa Lonick. Welcome, Marissa. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so happy you're here. So please tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Marissa Lonick. As you mentioned, I am a working mom of four kiddos, ages mm-hmm. eight, eight, four, and two. Mm-hmm. Founder of an organization called Mama Work It, where We support moms in the juggle of mom life and work life and wife life and fill in the blank (laughs) life. Yeah. In a nutshell, you know, I'm a native New Yorker currently living on the West coast in California, married for 12 years, former corporate executive. I could probably go on and on, but I think we, we probably need to get to some more (laughs) more exciting content here. (laughs) No, it's so exciting. Your life is exciting. And thank you for sharing that with us. So what caught me, what you were talking about is you're saying you're a mom of four and you said eight and eight twice, right? (laughs) Yeah. So I, when I became a mom, that was a surprise in itself, but then an even bigger surprise was learning that we were expecting twins. And that was shocking to say the least. I have identical twins. They're the kind of twins that you, they're not genetic, right? So you don't expect to hear that you're having twins and you're like, oh, okay. (laughs) So yeah, that was pretty exciting. And as someone who enjoys the planning process, that threw me off track a little bit, but it was a good, a really, really, you know, a wonderful blessing and a good learning experience to jump right into motherhood in that way. Yes, that's a big jump into motherhood because it's hard enough to jump into motherhood with one. So to right. hear there's two coming, I remember holding my breath when I, because I have a son and he's 10 months old. And I remember holding my breath when they were <laughs> going to tell me like, is there one in there? Or is there two in there? So yeah, it sounds like you took it in stride. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, there was there was a, a moment of shock for sure. But then, you know, <laughs> we got more comfortable with the idea. <laughs> yes. So yes. So tell us a little bit about mom life for you. Sure. Yeah. So mom life. Wow. I mean, It's different every day, I feel like, right? Like as much as we are on a routine here, we have a good system. I mean, you have to, when you have a large family, I Mm -hmm. think especially, but even if you have one or two kids, I mean, it's, it's surely helpful when you have good systems in place. Each day is a bit different. I kind of look at it as it's like, well, A, it's the most rewarding and challenging job Mm -hmm. that I've ever had the lowest monetary paying in that sense, but (laughs) the highest, definitely the highest impact and reward, the most important job for sure. And the one that teaches me the most, Mm -hmm. the one that really like makes me stop and think often (laughs) about the choices I'm making, about the examples I'm setting about God, even just the way I'm living my own life, Mm -hmm. not in, even in the parenting model, just in the, the human being model. So very impactful, I would say. (laughs) Yes. Very impactful. And I love that you brought up that it makes you look within yourself to make sure that you're setting that wonderful example for your children. And that is the biggest topic on the make life fun show is that moms are doing that inner work and doing that for themselves so that they can be able to set those systems in place and have it flow with a little bit more ease. So if you don't mind speaking to a little bit of what your journey of like working on yourself so that you can of course, take it day yeah. by day and the changingness and the craziness that is motherhood. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think I was a victim of this. I think a lot of moms are victim of this is that when you enter motherhood, it's like your life just takes a total 180. Mm-hmm right? You go from having very little responsibility. You know, we all have responsibility. We've all got bills and jobs and 
you know, maybe a spouse, maybe not, you know, there's lots of things, of course, that we're juggling before motherhood, but it, it amplifies quite a bit, as you know, right? Yes. When you jump into being a mom, like all of a sudden there is a human being, a helpless, tiny mm-hmm. human mm-hmm. that you are in charge of 24 seven. And, you know, I think a lot of moms jump into that. A, they want to do the best possible job. They want to be the best possible mom. They want to get it right. In order for them to feel like they have to make that happen, they sacrifice everything about themselves. Mm -hmm. They put all of their energy, all of their love, all of their hours in the day, just anything you can think of toward their children. And even if you're, you know, in any situation, working mom, stay at home mom, we all feel that. We all Mm -hmm. feel that mom guilt. We all feel that sense of like wanting to do everything for the kids, right? Or we felt that at least when we entered motherhood, we've gone through that phase. And I think what, what I experienced and what I know a lot of my clients experience is that, Hey, that doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That doesn't feel good because we're just depleted all the time. And B, we actually don't end up, it's so counterproductive because we don't end up showing up as the best mom, Mm -hmm. as the best version of ourselves when that's how we're treating the situation. So we think we're pouring everything into our kids or into our families And in the end, when we actually look back on it, we're like, oh, I was a horrible mom the (laughs) other day because I was just exhausted or Mm -hmm. I lost my patience so much because I'm not taking care of myself or I'm not doing anything nice for myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I really recognized that and I saw that a lot of these things that I thought is the way motherhood should be, Mm -hmm. were holding me back from taking care of myself from living my best life from like, I'm quite an ambitious woman. And I am sure many of your listeners are Mm -hmm. too. And and so are you, Josie, I bet when you're not feeding that ambition, you are coming from a place of depletion. And Mm -hmm. when you're coming from a place of depletion, you can't possibly give even close to your best self Mm -hmm. to the most important job you have, which is motherhood. I agree 100% with what you're saying and how you were saying that when you recognize that for yourself, did you develop a sort of practice for yourself or did you like, what did you do once you recognize that? Cause we can't, we can't pour from an empty cup. Cause I like to say we have to fill ourselves up so that we are able to give the best of ourselves. Cause that's our, as a mother, like you're saying, it's our, our wish and our hope is to be the lighting example for our children. And so what, did you do for yourself to get that yeah. straight? Well, I'll tell you what wasn't working first. What yes. wasn't working was like, I would go through the cycle. I would go through the cycle of like doing all the things, working hard, taking care of the house, taking care of the kids, like doing everything for everyone, getting to that point where I was like having like a mini mental breakdown and feeling <laughs> super resentful of everything, doing something superficially nice for myself, like going to get my nails done or like doing, you know, like a date with a friend or watching bad reality TV or like whatever it is, right. Filling that, like putting a band aid on that situation and then repeating it all over mm-hmm. again. And that doesn't work, right. You can't get to that level, put that band aid on and expect that the wound is going to heal. Yes. So I'll tell you that wasn't working. What, what did end up working was when I actually started proactively making some of these things a routine. Mm-hmm. When I pu- started fueling my ambition, because for Mm -hmm. me, that's very, very important. And I think for many moms out there, we have dreams, we have Mm -hmm. things we want to pursue. And we often think when we're in like the trenches of motherhood, when we're in the like challenging years, when the kids really, really need us when they're little, we pause those. Mm -hmm. We think, oh, it's not the right time. I'll wait till they start school. I'll wait till daycare. I'll wait till the pandemic's over, you know, whatever excuse we tell ourselves, because they're all valid. They sound very truthful in all honesty, and people can view them in that way. But the bottom line is when we pause that important part of ourselves, we can't possibly fix the problem, right? We're just band-aiding it all the time. And it's not, it's not actually working. Right. So one step, you know, one important milestone that happened for me was I was, I was offered a really significant job promotion at the time. I had twin toddlers. It was a great step for me in my career. Understandably so, I was really nervous about Mm -hmm. and scared about taking the position because what did that mean for me? I was scared that I wouldn't be able to show up as the mom I wanted Mm -hmm. to be. I'd have to move cross country with my family. So we'd be in a new city. 
didn't know anyone, you know, didn't have support around family, friends, any of that. I'd have a new schedule. I'd have a new commute. Like all of these things freaked me out to the point where I initially turned down the opportunity. I was like, I don't think I can do it. Was plagued with regret for a whole weekend. Like every, like every minute it was just on my mind. And I was like, this is a mistake. I have to at least try it. Thankfully, I have a really supportive husband who was like, yes, let's do it. So we did. It was a great decision in the end. It just taught me, you know, it taught me to like with any change that you have entering motherhood, adding to your family, changing careers, becoming a stay at home mom or entering the workforce again, any of that, you know, it just propels you to make different, different moves in kind of how you're managing your time, how you're living your life, how you're showing up for yourself. And that's exactly what it did. And it turned out wonderful. Yay. It turned out wonderful. So that's just one example, you know, other examples, like once I got in that routine with my new career and my new job, you know, I, I was feeling like a creative depletion. I needed to hit that. I needed to tap that again, started blogging at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, you think as a mom, you're already so busy. Why take on something else? Mm-hmm. But if you're not actually fueling something that is important to you, an ambition, a passion, a dream you're going to feel depleted no matter how busy or empty your schedule is, Mm -hmm. right? Adding to that when it's something that's that meaningful to you is going to actually energize you. It's going to light you up. It's going to give you more, like more pep in your step, really. And that's really where my business was born from there. Yes. I love everything that you're speaking to because so many women can relate with so much of what you just said. The one thing that pops up for me instantly when you were speaking is when we go into motherhood, We think we're going to put everything else on the back burner and we're going to do this. We're committed. We're in it. We're in the trenches. And that's what happened to me. And that's how Make Life Fun was born because you are, you're just in it. But once you are fueling yourself and doing things that light you up, it just opens you up for so much more. Yeah. How much better of a mom do you feel when you're in that state of mind versus when you're not? Yeah. 180% difference. Like it's like a night and day when you are coming from a place of like, this is, I have to, to a place like I get to, because I am so full and so filled up. I get to do this. So that's, oh, that made me feel so good when you're speaking to that. Cause I know so many moms out there are, that is going through their mind so much. Like, I'm just going to get to this later. I'm just going to push it aside. And I'm here to tell them, you're here to tell them like, no, fuel yourself. Like, what are you going to do to fuel yourself today? (laughs) Yeah. I tell my clients every single day, they have to do something nice for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that can be something lavish one a day. Uh, It's probably not going to be like that every day, but it could be something like really great, like a day trip or, you know, a lunch date with a friend or a date with date night with your spouse, or it can be something super small. Like you wake up before your kids, you have Mm -hmm. 10 minutes of quiet time. You enjoy a cup of coffee while it's hot without microwaving it. (laughs) Times like taking a walk alone, 20 minutes in your neighborhood without pushing a stroller, just Mm -hmm. alone, listening to something that brings you joy, a podcast and, you know, a book, your favorite jams. I don't know, you know, just really ensuring that every single day you prioritize something like that. Yes. And it has to be put into place. You have to put it into place. It's not just going to miraculously happen. Oh, so that's no. where the big time management piece comes in. So I would love for you to speak on that. Yes. Yeah. I love that you said that because A, if it's not scheduled, at least in my house, and I'm sure probably in your house too, it's probably not happening. Yep. So it's got to get scheduled. I recommend, you know, like if you're an electronic calendar user, pop like a reoccurring reminder in your calendar every single day. You can shift it around if your day gets hectic at that time, but make sure that reminder is coming up for Mm -hmm. you. If you're a paper planner user, write it down, black ink. When you write (laughs) something down in black ink, it is way more likely to actually happen. Believe it or not, that has been proven. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whiteboard, you know, jot it on there every day. Like these are the simple exercises you can be doing whatever system you use to Mm -hmm. ensure that you hold yourself accountable and you actually get that done. You can also have an accountability buddy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's another mom friend who is feeling like she could benefit from this as well. But with that said, an accountability buddy isn't your most important accountability. Your most important accountability is you. Like you mentioned, like you are the one that's going to actually make that happen. You have to be your own, you know, biggest hype girl 
and your own kind of biggest law enforcement Mm -hmm. to ensure you're (laughs) you're obeying the law there too. (laughs) So that is crucial and important for sure. Yes. I love that you're speaking to being your own hype person because I say be your own cheerleader. So it's the same thing is you have to do that for yourself. And it's then it's, we think it's just for ourselves, but then it's not, especially like, as we were speaking earlier, when we're full, we have so much more to give. And earlier in the conversation, you were speaking about time management. And that is what, when I told my husband, I was having this conversation, (laughs) he says, this is what I've been trying to tell you this is what I've been trying to teach you time management and so I know for a lot of moms and for me I could benefit from the whole creating the system and having a little bit more time management so I would love for you to speak from your experience and how you work that time management as a mom and also having work yeah of course yeah. yeah well there's so many facets to time management I think and you know I also feel like sometimes when people hear it, they cringe a little bit because they think like, oh my God, I'm just going to have to like get this Excel spreadsheet out or do something that sounds super boring or it's so routine. There's no room for spontaneity or anything. And that's not time management, at least not the way I teach it. And B, you know, for moms, I think we got to remember this. We're so, I don't want to generalize here, but I think most moms are pretty good at managing a lot of moving parts Mm -hmm. in life, right? They pretty much are like the house managers in a lot of situations. Like they're managing lots of moving schedules Mm -hmm. around. They remember everybody's birthdays, the birthday parties they got invited to, the gifts that have to get bought, the cards that have to get written, all of that, right? So we've got this really heavy mental load of managing time and schedules and things around us but we're not as good as at managing for ourselves, Mm. right? We're typically we're the things that we need to do for us are at the bottom of the to-do list, the to-do list. That's like the length of a CVS receipt, super duper long, never ending, always getting added to. And we all know what happens to the thing at the bottom of the to-do list. It rarely gets done. So a, you always have time for the things you put first. Mm. So taking care of yourself, as we mentioned, it's a prerequisite in order for you to be able to power through all of those other things. Mm -hmm. So how can you do that? Well, A, get a really solid morning routine. Mm -hmm. You don't have a morning routine in place already. Highly recommend you get some sort of system in there to get that done. This doesn't have to be super complicated. It doesn't have to be super long. A good morning routine can be like 10 to 15 minutes, Mm -hmm. honestly, as long as you're doing things in there that are setting up your day for success. In fact, I even think Not to like counteract the morning routine, but I think there are lots of things you can even do the night before to set your day Mm. up for success. Like for example, I created a journal planner for moms. It's called Word to Your Mother, A Mama's Mm. Guide to Journal Mm. Today and Slay Tomorrow. And the exercises, they take no more than 15 minutes. It is a, a few journal prompts that you do the night before. Why is this good? A, it has you reflecting on your day. It has you seeing patterns. So I know there have been seasons in my life where I go to bed more often than not feeling really like defeated by my day Mm. or feeling really like my day really kicked my booty Mm. (laughs) versus like feeling really proud and accomplished that day where I like going to bed feeling that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm noticing that pattern in my journal prompts, I'm like, okay, it's a good self-awareness. Where do I need to like change some things up or flip the script here? Or is it my mindset or is it actually the way I'm doing things mm-hmm. each and every day? So it's some journal prompts for self-reflection, quick and easy. This is like the journal for the non-journaler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a quick and dirty guide to setting up your next day for mm-hmm. success. Okay. So things like setting an intentional word. For the next day. Mm-hmm. How do you want to feel throughout that day? What do you want to be focused on? Some days, maybe you're going to be like, I want to feel motivated. I want to slay my day. Like I want to be really like power through it. I got a busy day. And maybe you're going to write a word that really embodies that other days. You're going to be like, I'm beat. I need to remember to just like breathe or mm-hmm. rest or fill in the blank on this day. And I'm going to make sure there've been days. Like I think back to like very hard days during the height of the pandemic Mm -hmm. where I would write things like smile, Hmm. happy, because I needed to just remember in this moment, like as challenging as things were with a crazy household of four kids and a husband who was out being an essential worker and like me trying to juggle a career and kids and homeschool and all these things. Like I needed to bring myself back to being in a present moment and remember (laughs) like that simple reminder. 
And then obviously other things to help you progress that day. I say to set three small goals a day, three small goals. You will hold yourself accountable for come hell or high water. Not, not that massive to-do list that, you know, isn't all going to get done today. Like stop setting impossible expectations on yourself. Mm -hmm. How about just three? How about three small goals? You know, you're going to do be flexible about when they get done. And then at the end of the day, feeling like, yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're setting yourself up to win. Everything you're saying is just like, you are setting yourself up to win by developing these habits, these practices that you come back to and that hone you into that present moment and brings you back. You're kind of coaching yourself with that journal work and bringing that awareness and that light to yourself of what is working and what isn't working. And so will you say the name of your journal one more time for me? Yes. It's called word to your mother. (laughs) <laughs> a mama's guide to journal today and slay tomorrow. And I can, I can send you that link. So you yeah, can it. absolutely. And I love, I love the name of it. And I love like how you were saying it's journaler's guide to not even knowing how to journal because you have those prompts. You're helping them get that awareness that we all so very often need. Yeah. I'm going to share a secret. It's not going to be a secret now. because <laughs> podcast. You know, I'm a writer. I've written a couple books. I've got a new book coming out, but I wasn't always really into journaling. Mm -hmm. I really wasn't. I felt like I'm a doer as well. So like, I'm kind of on the go a lot and I, you know, I'm, it's a busy house here. And I just felt like, is that worth my time? You guys, this is worth your time. Mm -hmm. It's 15 minutes per night. It will set you up for such success. It is worth the few minutes. Even if you don't use these prompts, even if you just take five minutes, 10 minutes, to sit there and get what's on your mind on paper, mm-hmm. the breakthroughs that come from something as small as a habit like this are so powerful. Mm-hmm. That is so true. There's something magical to pen to paper. Cause I used to journal in my phone in the notepad. Mm-hmm. I would just kind of put brain dump in there before I go to bed. Cause I noticed that I sleep better. <laughs> so there's a benefit of that. Yes. Too. Yes. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started doing it in my phone. And then what I realized is I'd have to scroll and scroll and scroll to find what I needed. And it was like a mess. But the moment I took it to pay, pen to paper, the things that flow out of you is it's different when it's on a phone versus when it's paper. Yeah. It's like your intuition's voice gets louder and it's able to, you're able to listen more clearly. Yes. And that's such a gift to yourself. Yes. And so speak to us on your new book that you have coming out. Yeah. So the new book is called Biz Momagement. It is very much in line with my momagement strategy. <laughs> my first book was called Time Momagement. And it is for the mom who is really looking to go from employee to entrepreneur. Mm. So if one of your goals this year or just in the near future is to really make that transition from being a working mom who is working for, for someone else to being a mompreneur, an entrepreneur who has that time that financial freedom, really that autonomy in Mm. those spaces and has that drive and passion kind of within you that you have maybe felt like, I want to do this, but I don't know if it's the right time to do this. I don't know if I can juggle this with the busy life I've already got going on. This book is absolutely for you. It's, It's written in a very kind of coaching style yet shares a lot of personal stories as well. You know, I was a a corporate executive for many years, managed a nine to five, eight 30 to five, whatever you want to call it, you know, commute, all of those things while growing my family, raising my kids and building my business alongside Mm -hmm. it. So there's a lot of really, really good like nuggets in there and, and good stories that I think will be really relatable to a mom in those shoes. Yes. And I love that you're speaking to that time freedom and that autonomy that becoming an entrepreneur has. It has so many gifts, but it also has so much down as well. (laughs) And the way my coach put it to me is like, you signed up for it. You signed up for the good, the bad, the ugly, and it's yours at the end of the day. And so I would love for you to speak a little bit about that entrepreneur, just a little taste for the moms that have thought about it, but they don't know. They, they hear how hard it is from some entrepreneurs that are struggling and then they hear how easy it is from others. So if you could give us a little bit of that middle yeah. ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you when you're hearing how hard it is, you've caught someone on a rough day. And when you're he- hearing how great it is, you've caught, 
even maybe even that same person on an amazing day. Yes. It is a roller coaster for everyone. Okay. So <laughs> know that it's perspective. It's, you know, maybe the season you're talking to someone in when you get that feedback. But I feel like a, I don't think it's for everyone. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's fine. The world isn't made for every single person to start their own business. How would any of us survive if that's how, <laughs> if that's how it was? Right. But it is something if it's, if it's calling you, if you mm-hmm. felt like this is a passion of mine, if you have something that you thoroughly enjoy doing and you can find a way to monetize it, it's the best of both worlds, mm-hmm. right? Because when you're doing work that you truly love, it's super fun. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always feel like hard work. Yes. That's not to say that entrepreneurship isn't hard. <laughs> There's going to be days where you're wearing a lot of hats, some mm-hmm. hats that fit you really well, some hats that are too big, too small, too ugly, whatever, but you've got to wear them because you've got to make your business grow and thrive and survive, right? There are days where you are going to feel like you have the worst boss in the world yourself. <laughs> I have been in those shoes. I have put the most unreasonable demands on myself some days where I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, this would not ever be asked of anyone Mm -hmm. in my old job. Why would I do this to me? Right? So you have to work through that. You have to really, and that's where a lot of the the internal work is really, really important in this space. There's a lot of learning to be had. Tips I would say is make it a habit to constantly develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Listen to podcasts like these read important books that are really, you know, nonfiction, personal development books. If you can join a community, get a coach. These are all, some people think they're like nice to have additional things that you do when you have time in your business. No, these are the core things you must be doing if you want your business to succeed. Yes, it's 100%. You have to do the work as you do the work. You have to do it for yourself and for your business. And I love that you're speaking to, it's the season that you hear these from the same person. You hear the good days and the bad days and the in-between, but it is so, it's such rewarding, uh, such a rewarding work. And I love that you're also saying you can create something that you enjoy so much that doesn't feel like work. Absolutely. Absolutely. I kid you not. I mean, I always really enjoyed my corporate work up until it didn't align anymore Mm -hmm. with really where I wanted my career to take me, but I really enjoyed it. And I was never in that position. I know a lot of women are, so I don't discount this in any way, but I feel really fortunate. I was never in the position where I just like dreaded Mm -hmm. going to work every day because I really enjoyed what I did. What I dreaded was the inflexibility and the inability to just really call the shots Mm -hmm. in a lot of the things in my work. So, you know, this is like, I remember when I was going back to work after a maternity leave and, you know, just thinking to myself like, oh my gosh, I'm leaving my house for 12 hours. <laughs> you know, I know I'm going to be fine when I'm there, distracted, enjoying what I'm doing, but that doesn't make it any less painful than having to physically like leave your house 12 hours. I was crying on the train, like going <laughs> back to work. I mean, it is really tough and it's, it's, it's a juggle. And I'm, I'm almost glad that this has been one of the things that's been brought to light with the pandemic that, you know, it's allowed the opportunity for many working moms to not have to physically leave the home, to be able to have a little bit more closeness and flexibility in their schedule with their jobs because of that. But I think as the world is opening back up and things are starting to normalize a little bit, we're feeling that again. Mm -hmm. And I know many, many women have made that transition really because they're just craving that sense of freedom and that ability to really just own their schedule, Mm -hmm. own the work they're doing, know their worth and be able to like set their price points Mm -hmm. and yeah, just pursue their passion and their ambition. And so, you know, I'm not mad at the pandemic for that reason. (laughs) I think it's brought us some blessings too. Yes. And definitely if I always say on this show, if you look for the good, you're going to find it. If you look for the bad, you're going to find that too. And so if we do, we, if we can unpack a little bit of some of the good that happened, it is that some of us, our eyes were open to a different way of being. Right. Right. Yes. And you hit the nail on the head when you said something about worthiness, that's another big topic in itself. It's like a whole nother conversation, but if you could just speak to even a little bit of that with becoming an entrepreneur, that worthiness piece is so big. Oh yeah, for sure. I have a quiz in my program. It's called how worthy am I? Mm -hmm. 
And it is like one of those fun, like, remember when you were younger and you used to do like the Cosmo quizzes? <laughs> yes, love like that. Those. Yes, <laughs> right? those are so fun. So it's something similar to that. You know, it doesn't take very long and it just helps you really reflect on how am I embodying like this worthiness? Because mm-hmm. when you could say like, I'm worth it. I totally like, I feel like it. But if you're not actually taking action in your day-to-day decisions, if you're not embodying that version of yourself, that like queen, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so to speak, you are, you're selling yourself short in so many ways, right? So from a business perspective, you're going to undercharge, you're going to mm-hmm. undercut your services when you're bringing a ton of value to your clients. From a mom guilt perspective, you are going to fall back into those old patterns, potentially, like mm-hmm. we were talking about before of like putting everyone else's needs mm-hmm. before your own. From a financial perspective, you're going to feel like, oh, is that investment really worth it for my business? Should I sign on to work with that coach? Should I join that community or that program? It seems expensive. You're going to let all those excuses Mm -hmm. talk, talk you out of making an investment that probably is worth way more (laughs) than the money you're laying out for it. So I think, you know, when you can get yourself to a place where you feel worthy and, and don't get it twisted. I used to twist up worthiness with entitlement a lot. Mm. And entitlement to me is really gross. Like mm-hmm. if I meet somebody who's entitled, oh, it is such a turnoff for me. Like, I don't want to be your friend. I don't even <laughs> want to be in your presence. Like you are just not for me. Right. I don't like that type of aura and attitude. Mm. And I used to kind of mix them up a little bit and be like, well, I never want to come across as being yes. entitled. So I'll just, I'll just be unworthy all the mm. time. Uh, no, <laughs> very different. Mm-hmm. Very, very different. That's my little spiel on worthiness. Yes. And I love it so much. And I love at the end, how you're saying, because I think a lot of us, we do, we take that worthiness to be selfish. That was my word. That's like, (laughs) that was the word for me that did the same thing for your entitlement word. And so I think a lot of moms feel that when they talk and they think about the worthiness, they don't want to be selfish. They don't want to be entitled. And I love that you're speaking to that worthiness spills over in so many aspects of our lives. And when we can start to hone in into that feeling of worthiness and that queen that we all are, then everything else starts to kind of fall into place, but it starts with just even recognizing it and deciding for yourself that definition that you're going to give that word because it isn't selfish. (laughs) It isn't entitled. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And we also tend to care a lot what other people think. Mm. So, oh my gosh, well, if I do that, you know, what are the other moms going to think or what's, you know, I don't know, my sister going to think or whoever, right. Whoever's Mm. got that like place in your brain that you care to think about. Truth be told, most people don't care. Most people Mm. aren't thinking about you. So let's just remind you of that. (laughs) For five minutes, they will care. Our lives are so busy. There's so much going on that I think it's a really big story that we tell ourselves that that person that, like you were saying, in our mind is really going to care that much to halt their life. (laughs) No, (laughs) to make it all about you. (laughs) You're not that special. Move on. (laughs) And once we can put that hat on of like, Nobody cares. Live your life. It gets to be yours. Something magical happens. Yeah. But it's not that easy to get there, right? (laughs) It's not that easy, but it's like you said, once you cross that line, it's like freedom. It's just Mm. freedom. Yes. Yes. Best word, freedom. (laughs) I would love for you to speak a little bit about your programs, your courses, your offerings, and share it with our listeners of Make Life Fun because you've shared so many nuggets with us today of the time management and you shared your story of going from corporate to an entrepreneur and your journal. And it seems like it's you're doing so much and it's so great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I would love to share. So really there are two tracks in the Mama Work It biz, right? So there's the time management track. This is for the mom who is just feeling really overwhelmed really like she can't get a handle on the juggle of mom life, work life, wife life, fill in the blank life. (laughs) And it gives you some of those really core fundamental time management strategies, philosophies, approaches, but really made for moms, Mm -hmm. right? Really geared in for you. So we go into practical things like, you know, organizational tools, automation, Mm -hmm. like real life hacks that are going to help you. And then we also go really deep into things like mom guilt and managing Mm -hmm. that. 
Because the bottom line is, if you have all those systems, all those routines and habits in place, which are all wonderful and important, if you haven't been able to be like get a handle on the mom guilt, all of that is worth nothing mm-hmm. because you're going to spend all this time organizing, getting everything set up. And then when push comes to shove and you actually have to power through and do the stuff, you're going to let mom guilt come in and like railroad over mm-hmm. everything and just push it all to the side. So we go, we go pretty deep on certain things there. There's an option to take that program on demand on your own time during four weeks. However, it is in conjunction with me following up with you every single day, (laughs) because I know how easy it is when you sign up for these things and you're motivated at the beginning by like week two or week three for you to be like, oh, I got busy or something else got in the way or life happened. So my real focus and goal for that program and creating it was I want you to finish stronger than even when you started. Mm. And I know that you need to have like a little birdie in your ear or me in your inbox. (laughs) Hi, making sure that you actually get that done and make it happen. So I I mentioned I'm from New York. I'm pretty direct (laughs) in that way. So I like to, you know, I like to ensure that I've got that that presence with you throughout. And of course, there's the option too, if you want to pair that with a a one-on-one coaching component, we can do that too. And then the biz management track, you know, that is for the mom who, like I mentioned earlier, is really looking to make those goals with their time related to building their business. Mm -hmm. So this is a a bit of a different program, longer program. It's a six month membership Mm -hmm. And it encompasses a variety of things. There is group coaching within a community. There's also that community around you of like-minded mompreneurs building their businesses while raising their babies. Mm -hmm. There are experts who come in and do workshops in all different areas of business development from foundational work to branding, to marketing, to energy alignment, like all the tools and things you need. There's a library of resources What else? One-on-one coaching and strategy calls, accountability. And then we do really fun quarterly 21-day challenges where we build new habits. Mm. It is just, yeah, it is a great program if you are a mom juggling business life, mom life. Maybe it's a side hustle. Maybe it's your main hustle. Maybe you want to turn it into your main hustle. (laughs) We get it. You know, it's a business program, but we get the mom, the mom juggle. Yes. And I love that you're speaking to the mom juggle because it is, it changed like my entrepreneur journey, I know the moment I had a baby completely transformed and it takes on a whole new, it's different. A new dance. <laughs> That's yeah. how I've been putting it for myself. It's a whole new dance. And to have that community to back you up is so important. Yeah. It's so different. I agree. I agree. Like the passion and drive is still there, but you have to balance it now with motherhood. And I should say you get to balance it now <laughs> with motherhood. Yeah. Yes, because yeah, that's another thing. I always have to remind myself the most important thing, the most important thing. I chose to be a mom. I want to be a mom. Most important thing is Everett. But at the end of the day, we got to fuel ourselves too. So having that. So I love that this conversation has flowed in that way of like the most important thing is being that mom, having that full-time job, but also fueling yourself and giving yourself wins, like setting yourself up to win. I feel like that's my big takeaway from this conversation is setting yourself up to win. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. If you do the work on yourself, it pays back tenfold. (laughs) Yeah. Marissa, thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so much for sharing your stories with us and giving us practical tools that we can actually use to create these lasting habits that will transform our mom life, transform our our businesses, if that's a choice for the mom listening, I would love for my listeners to be able to celebrate you and work with you and support you. So please tell us where we can find you. Absolutely. Yeah. The best place to find me is my website. It is mamaworkit.com, M-A-M-A. There you can find a lot of free resources, podcast, blog, links to my books, courses, programs, all of that. And then in addition to that, I'm on social media, mostly on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn a little bit, but I'm at the handle, let mama work it. Let mama work it. And we'll be sure to put that in the notes so everybody can find it. One last thing, if there's anything on your heart that you feel called to share, this is your time to just share what is on your heart. Wow. (laughs) That's a loaded question for me. (laughs) Well, okay. If I can give you one small mind shift frame that you can do when it comes to how you're spending your time, how you're, how you're using it with intention, 
So I know, like we mentioned, like we talked about in this interview, you know, we talked a lot about moms feeling like they have to pause things Mm -hmm. during that time in motherhood where it just feels too challenging and they feel like, you know, they're just too busy or they don't have time. I hear, I don't have time a lot. Mm -hmm. I hear this a lot, whether that means pausing on your own ambition or your own business or your own career moves, pausing on, you know, things you want to do with your kids because your career or your business is getting in the way. It could be a variety of things, your relationship, any of that. So I challenge you the next time you say those words aloud, or you think those words to yourself with whatever fill in the blank is flip the script on this and start saying it's not a priority to me Mm. instead. So just to really quickly exemplify that your kid wants you to read them a story. You're burnt out or you're working on something or work or whatever. And this doesn't have to happen at every moment. I know there are times when you're busy and you can't read your kid a story. So this is not meant to induce mom guilt. Okay. (laughs) Just let me say that. But you know, let's say it's not something that important. You're like scrolling social media or whatever. And they're like, mommy, read me a story. And you say, I don't have time for that right now or whatever. Flip it. It's not a priority to me right now to read you a story. Mm. How does that feel? How does that feel? Right. You could feel one of two ways. Maybe right now you are working on a really important deadline for something at work or something in your business. And it's just not in this moment. So Mm -hmm. you say, Hey, in an hour, I'm going to read that to you. But right now this isn't a priority because this is Mm -hmm. fine. Instant feeling. Okay. With that situation right now, what if you don't feel that? What if what you're doing isn't that important and your kid asks you that and you flip the script in your head? Oh my gosh you were going to make it a priority in that moment, right? You were going to start using your time with more intention in that Mm -hmm. moment. So I just, I like to tell people to really take this reframe and do it anytime that script is running through, because I think you'll start to notice that you start making decisions and using your time more wisely and more toward what your core values are and how you actually want to fulfill your goals. Yes. Oh, that one's like a, it, instantly you feel it in your body and our body knows, like our body knows the instant you ask that question. I was just like, I felt it in my core. And so I think even when you start asking yourself that question, what you're going to do is you're going to start to embody the things that you care about. You're going to start to embody those priorities and you're going to be creating those habits. I mean, almost on autopilot, if you start making that a practice. So thank you so much for sharing that Marissa, because that is Yes, that is a big question. And it is one that I could also, I could already feel would make a lasting impact. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a huge game changer. So there you go. Take that. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here on the make life fun show. Thank you for having me. I so enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're going to do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts places you listen. We are also on YouTube. If you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman, you can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. (laughs) And we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools. It's simple. It doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me. Jump into my world. I've got you.